Hey everybody, I'm Shane Ireland. I'm here in the Dominican Republic at Tabacalera Mina del Rey. Yes. With uh, my good friend, Henderson Ventura. Henderson, thank you so much, man. Thank you, man. Good to see you. Good to be back. It's a great time. Uh, and it's amazing to have you here, man. With the I whole can, group. Absolutely, with the whole okay. group. Um, so, really quickly, I think uh, your name is probably familiar to a lot of our viewers, the Ventura family. And real quick, what's the name of the street out here? Ventura Street. Right. I mean, come on. So tell me about the new factory. Um, the new factory, um, I was, uh, I never planned to have my own factory. Um, I worked with the family for 18 years, uh, building this company and, you know, beside my dad working for my whole career, pretty much. Um, so the fire happened and, and we have cows, you know, and i got forced to keep the brand alive at ventura mm -hmm. i have to make a quick move so i was supposed to do like a temporary little factory just to roll at ventura cigars and and then i don't know how to do things on the halfway yeah yeah so i just built like a nice little factory and i started to recreate uh like the first factory we have i would love to have this set up like this like that and we end up making like a, an Aventura factory that is called uh, Mina de Rey. Mina de Rey means, because I know you're gonna ask me. Yes. Uh, it means like um, the King's Mine. Mm -hmm. So the most popular cigar that we ever create, the King's Goal. Mm -hmm. uh, and and this is what the King's Goal come from. So we just call it the King's Mine in Spanish, Tabacalera Mina de Rey. Perfect. So this is the whole concept. This is the whole concept. Yeah. Um, and by the way, um, uh, we wanted to do something like a more boutique, uh, mm -hmm. but not also just more boutique, but to take the, the manufacturing a skill and level of quality to a higher level, mm -hmm. uh, more precise, you know, uh, more attention to detail. Uh, so we are uh, pretty much work like with younger rollers and we try to teach like a new uh, way to roll cigars and we scale every bunch in we don't do we don't use like a drum machine uh we just do we wait every bunch in and then we supervise every bunch by hand uh very old school dominican old school and i think that's one of the most precise way to get the best quality with the draw and everything uh, the look of the factory is very rustic, as the same as Adventure uh, concept of, for the branding. Uh, more like a vintage kind of rustic look, and very and, cozy though. Yeah, yeah, very cozy, as you can see. Yeah. So let me a, let me let me unpack a little bit of what you were talking about the quality and the, the the differences in how you do production here. One thing that you mentioned is weighing the bunches. So obviously you have a pair in the factory, yeah. a buncher and a roller. And every buncher before the um, bunch is put into the molds, they're weighing that there. And the industry standard is to weigh the cigars after the after the production is usually they weigh the whole thing after the production is completed. It's a whole bundle of cigars and there's a tolerance, obviously, depending on the size and stuff. Mm. So what's the advantage of weighing individual cigars versus like a finished uh, wheel? The thing is like uh, uh, to be precise with that, every blend is different. Mm -hmm. Depending if you do lighter tobacco, sometimes you need to measure the the same size, uh, like a, maybe uh, two grams lower. Uh -huh. If you th use a thicker tobacco, then normally they more heavy, mm -hmm. and uh, you can use like a maybe one gram, one and a half gram uh, higher, mm -hmm. uh, and you're still gonna have a good draw. Yeah. So. We still uh, wait the cigar after you know it's done, mm -hmm. but that's a way so you can control that buncher. So you're saying basically like you're they, weighing more than one time. Yeah. So oh, okay. the the buncher when they put the blend together, they put the binder, they roll the bunching, they they have more control of the and more consistency with the bunching. Yeah. You know, by themselves they can correct themselves. Ah, uh, okay. Like, uh, this is too heavy. Uh, let me take like a little piece out, you know, and put it back. So maybe and they, obviously you can't do that when the cigar has been in the mold 
four hours or whatever already has the wrapper on it. No, uh, even the wrapper can add like another gram to, to mm -hmm. the cigar, but you know by by the bunch already, like ah. what what you can control. And, and that's very consistent. Every cigar here go like a one gram lower and higher, but there's like a two very little digit, you know, that can change. Yeah. But I mean, and still after you make the cigar, you do uh, the supervisor check the cigar by hand mm -hmm. because sometimes probably they can have the perfect weight, but it can be that they put too much on the head and so little yeah. so distribution. So, but it's very weird to find a cigar that have a drug issue here. Yeah with them with that way that we work yeah maybe in the whole time that we up in the factory i have one single cigar that was a little too tight really and it was by my mistake uh -huh. that i was like uh, this cigar is a corona and it needs to be between 12 to 12 to 13 grand we make the cigar and i was like uh we have a dry issue here and not like a big deal, not like a, you did it, it did a draw, but I, it you could feel it though. Did yeah. it have the draw that I like? I like easy draw. Yeah, yeah. And and then we change between eleven maximum like a twelve. Mm. So uh, and 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 after that, we make the whole production and all the cigar before the packaging they were inspected again by one by one yeah yeah waiter check it all right this is a little too heavy on the side just to make sure that this cigar is out there fantastic you mentioned one other thing to me earlier that i don't really hear a lot at other factories and that is that you have a maximum quota for your pairs per day depending on the shape right no it's no the all the cigars there's only one cigar is that in general they cannot make more than 400 cigars in general in yeah. general and 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 that give me uh, the opportunity like uh, they make a good enough money with 400 cigar mm -hmm. so they didn't need to rush the process mm -hmm. this is very important and and all the cigar they make the same money if they make a corona yeah or half corona or if they make the 660 right so they not complain either if they making a smaller cigar. You're not making incentives that are maybe uh, undesirable. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, but that's not so common. You don't see uh, places that are capping the production per yeah. day. Um, and so the whole point there is that you know the proper amount of time and the proper attention to detail is going into each cigar. Yeah. Like for example, Will and Cero, if they make 250 or 300, they still make the same money. Ah, okay. And uh, with the King's Gold, that is more a uh, thicker wrapper, more difficult to work. Um, they make between 250 to 300 cigars per day, a uh, pair. Yeah. The other cigars, 400. Yeah. So that's why the is more limited batch with the King's Gold, because it takes longer to make it, uh, you know, the production where it's lower. Yeah. For example, here we made 2,400 cigars a day when we roll in King's Gold, sometimes go down to 1700s a day, you know? Yeah. And and that's how we work. Yeah. So basically what you're saying, though, is that it's not as important how many cigars you're making a day as it's important that the consistency and the quality, and the quality is there. Yeah. So what other ways would you say in this same approach at this factory, what other ways would you say you're um, elevating the quality along those lines? I will say uh, is a, we creating like a culture of quality. Mm -hmm. So uh, the rollers, there's smoke cigars. Everybody smokes cigars. I do like a blended seminar to everybody. I sit down with my people and smoke the cigars. Sometimes they tell me this cigar is good. And I'm like, uh, listen, it's not about how good it is. It's like what we're looking for. Yeah. We're making a new blend. All right. Uh, let's taste this cigar. What do you think? I think it's good to have a nice flavor, a good strength. What is the trend for you? Ah, it's a seven out of 10. I want that cigar to be four. Ah, okay. Uh, what do you, um, 
what do you feel on the retro hell? Ah, it's a little spicy. I want that cigar to be sweeter. Mm -hmm. So I make them understand that it's not just creating a good cigar, it's a creating experience. For example, we have the Queen Spirit give you an experience. The King's Gold, a whole different experience. Of course. There's people that tell me like uh, the Barber Raw is trash. Yeah. Just a straight like that. Yeah. And the people here love the Barber Roja. <laughs> I love the Barber Roja. Yeah. But it's just because it creates a different experience that you're not used to. Oh, sure. And and the same. Uh, on the Blue Eye Jack, that is the new cigar coming out. I was looking to have like a more mellow, medium body, more sweetness uh, on the mouth feeling. And also the retro health. And on the beginning, I was playing with different blends and a lot of people love a blend that was the opposite to the blend that we end up having. Sure. And it's just because like, this is too is great. I think it's the best blend that we create for that cigar. But it's too similar to this cigar that we already have. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we want to go every time that we create a blend, we want to create a whole different experience. And for me, the Rey will make the difference is the love that we have for a cigar. Mm. We want to do everything right. Yeah. It's not just like a, we don't want to be the biggest. Yeah. Uh, we don't care about the competition. Uh, if we just made 2,400 cigars a day, I don't mind to do a thousand, but the quality should be there. We competed for quality, not for quantity and who sells, who make the most money. Yeah. And that's it. I love that philosophy. Yeah, I like to hang out here. <laughs> I, 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 I love like to have this spot. Yeah. And and everybody's gone from the factory and you feel like oh, this place is cool, right? Yeah, yeah. And we're smoking this cigar. This cigar is great, right? Yeah. It's a whole experience. I will say that that out of all the places I've visited or been fortunate enough to visit, the vibe here is very different. It's very different. It's very different. It's less industrial. Yeah, yeah, and that's nice. And what I'm hearing from you also is that, you know, I don't I don't know for sure, but it doesn't seem common in this industry that, for example, just all the employees on the factory floor, the rollers, the bunchers, that they're involved to the level that you're saying they're involved when you're talking about product development and blending. Um, I think putting your mission in their heads is something you don't really see in a lot of other factories. The thing is, uh, this is a handmade product and this is very artistic way to create a product. And and you work with the sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is impossible uh, to create a premium cigar if you don't have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And and when, when I tell them like a, this blend just use a core of that leaf when they smoking and i do like a do two cigars one with a core and one with a, a whole leaf right ah, okay all right let's smoke the cigar try what do you feel here um i feel like this is very mineral mm. uh, i feel like it's too sharp and what do you feel here i feel a nice strength but very uh balanced mm. Okay, if you make that cigar using more than one coral leaf, you're gonna run the whole blend. That's interesting. That's interesting. And they understand, so they feel proud also to work here. You know, they make a good money. Yeah. Uh, they have uh, a cool vibe working here. They play music. It's very loud here during the day, <laughs> yeah. but they play music. It's like a party. <laughs> uh, yeah, they play music. They singing. They rolling. They talking to each other, and they doing competition. Uh, no, I'm, I'm the best here. <laughs> I, I have a, a girl that work here that she's very loud. I kind of, she's annoying sometimes. <laughs> and I can be like, can you roll me a cigar? But pretty. And like, a, and she like, come on. Like, I'm the best here. You know? The and pride. You, yeah, she yeah. have the pride. And we want to have that pride in every person that work in the company. Like this guy that work in the packaging that he's doing the sorting for the cigar. That's the last uh, quality control that we do in the factory. And sometimes uh, this guy is getting too many rejected cigars from the packaging. And he have 400 cigars already to date rejected. And I'm like, come on, let me check the cigar. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's a little line. And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah. And I started like, yeah, like, 
I'm looking for the quality, but this is a little too much. They're saying his standards are like, yeah, but yeah. but uh, and, and I think like let me check all those cigars and see like uh, which one can pass. But at the same time, I go like, uh, you do it right. Yeah. Because then I gonna change the brain to do mediocre things. Yeah, sure. And we're looking for perfection. Right. So he's doing his job. He's doing the job. Yeah. And I sell the cigars in a way as a second, you know? Oh, sure. sure. All right. Well, we can smoke those yeah, cigars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Why not? Why not? <laughs> no, that's really interesting. It sounds like you have, instead of just a bunch of pairs, a bunch of rollers, a bunch of bunchers, that you have a bunch of people that are almost trained nearly like a blender. Yeah. Like to really understand. Yeah the differences and, and why it's important to adhere to the recipes and the quality. Um, so what about, uh, tell us a little bit about, um, obviously you have a lot of experience in this industry. Your family has been in this industry for a very long time. When you yourself for Adventura are working on a new product, you're working for, looking for a new component. What, what exactly are you, are you looking for? What, do you, what gets you excited? And maybe also what you're doing right now. I mean, there's two different ways uh, of we create products. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, look into the portfolio and we say like, listen, we have a full body, we have a kinetic, we have this. Looking for gaps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see which niche we are out of. Mm -hmm. the market right mm -hmm. and let's say well, let's create a nice mild metal cigar or, let, or let's say let's create a full body that can you know compete with the full body yeah or i'll just say uh oh, do you know what we don't have a sumatra wrapper cigar why we don't play with yeah but then we say like let's create the best Sumatra. right always it's like like creates the best out of this and and sometimes the idea also it becomes big from like uh the chancellor that was a limited edition that we released this year yeah that cigar the whole idea with that cigar it was like uh there was an experiment made in pennsylvania lancaster and they grew uh some piloto mejorado that is a hybrid seafood six different kind of tobacco six different hybrid ones but the base of that tobacco is Piloto Cubano, mm -hmm. like 60%. Yeah. And they did the experiment and they have like 1800 pounds of tobacco that they don't know what to do with that tobacco, right? They call me up, Henderson, we have that tobacco. Are you interested on that? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Let me check. Let me smoke this tobacco. Well, yeah, why not? I take it. And then I started to do fermentation on the tobacco for a whole year and let the tobacco rest for another two years and then we started to taste it and was like so we create the the ch chancellor out of that tobacco and we started to blend this tobacco with all the tobacco the tobacco was very sharp mm. it was good it tastes like a piloto cubano but way stronger way more sharp and and that's why we use the toscano on that blend because the, the, it's Italian, a, the Italian dark fire, the the Italian cure fire fire cure, yeah. Um, because it's another tobacco that is sharp and heavy. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you use it like a, a tobacco that is very sharp, you need to go in the same level so you make them fight and balance out the cigar. Ah, okay. So, uh, then sometimes the blend idea come from a unique tobacco that we try. And we need to Figuring make it out a work. Way. Yeah, figure yeah. out the behavior of the tobacco, how you can blend the tobacco, and you just get into the game of playing with, you know, playing with blends. Yeah. So that's that's the way, man. Most of the time that we, we, we work. like, for example, I have that tobacco automatic. I have three years growing that tobacco. I still I have two blends, but I never produce a single cigar for regular production. Yeah. Yeah. Just tasting, tasting, tasting. When I feel it's on point, there's a perfect age. Then let's make a cigar, probably a limited edition. And I have like a two prototype blend that I did with that tobacco, but I'm gonna keep working on that. Yeah. But the beauty also to be in the factory, I ha I take my time to create a blend, taste the cigar, make a little production for myself, like the cigar that you try. Yeah. Age very well. All right, let's make a production. Let's, right. let's introduce that cigar. But I take my time. It takes time. Yeah, it yeah. takes time. What is, is there a cigar in your portfolio, in the Adventura portfolio that you find yourself smoking most often for personal enjoyment? 
the thing you change all the time. Yeah, yeah. What is it right now? Uh, right now I'm smoking a lot of La Llorona. Ah, okay. Yeah. Corona size. Yeah. Uh, but it changed all, all the time. Like I, sometimes I got married with the King's Gold, sometimes I got married with the Queensbury. My go-to is like the Conqueror because I like the Habano. Yeah. And, but my favorite tobacco is the Broadleaf. So I do, I smoke like a King's Gold, but I treat the King's Gold like a treat for myself. Ah, okay. You know, like I'm at home. It's a rich experience I have experience a nice dinner. Too. Yeah. I have a glass of wine. Let me get the King's Gold. Yeah. Not like I'm running in the factory, I'm gonna have a King's Gold because I feel I'm gonna waste the cigar. Ah, okay. And I, I smoke a lot of La Llorona. And most of the time during the day here at work, I, I, I'm always trying the... Current production. The current production to follow up the quality, see the blend, you know, so. Would you say that there's something that's the most popular for all of the workers here, all of the factory employees that they like to smoke? They, uh, I would say, is a competition between the Barbarroja and the uh, Queensper. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like the supervisor, he smoke, he just smoke Queensper, <laughs> Robusta. Yeah, only. Uh, when, that's why he takes home. His personal. His yeah, personal that's his personal. Yeah. So one of the thing I noticed here that's unique is that in most factories you see the old school wooden molds. Yeah. Um, and you're using mostly uh, something that by comparison seems really high tech and really modern. Yeah. Uh, what is the advantage of using these molds uh, that are basically made of the composite material? Um, it is bring more consistency on the shape of the cigar mm. and, and, and is more rounder head shape. Uh -huh. uh, on the wood mold, uh, you can have like a slightly different sometimes. And so the precision you can get using this material versus wood is basically yeah. to a tighter tolerance yeah, yeah. but it's, it's it's a thing of taste mm -hmm. most of the time also like um the it lasts longer the plastic oh yeah sure yeah. sure so the wood one you know you need to be changing changing them all like every four years maybe or oh maybe, really yeah mm. to keep the, the the high quality in the cigar yeah but the wood mold have a lot of advantages you know in front of the plastic one because the wood one uh it get the press faster yeah and also um if he's if the binder is humid you know they don't get stick to the to the mold ah okay so so it sort of depends on the blend yeah. as well yeah and it depends on the fact everyone everyone make it like their decision you know what to use and on their factory what else would you say is different about your approach here compared to a bigger more industrial factory um I will say the way that we blend the cigars. Yeah. Uh, the tobacco we pick. Um, we we have our own farms. We uh, we control our own uh, fermentation on the tobacco. Mm -hmm. and, and as in a small factory, is like uh, yeah, we're small, but we have like uh, a lot of power to control our quality. Yeah. So that's a, a main thing, you know, for us. I first of all started like uh, uh, the uh, uh, growing tobacco mm -hmm. and fermentating tobacco and end up having my own factory. So I have like the whole process cover yeah. to control the, the quality of the cigar from the seed to the, uh, to, to the, the final cigar, product. To the, yeah. final product. the only tobacco that we don't control like uh, the the seed and the fermentation is the tobacco that is imported. Of course. I mean, for example, Ecuador and wrapper, we do fermentation here. Oh, okay. Uh, additional, then, additional fermentation. Additional fermentation. But then like you have like a San Andres um, and all the tobacco for other countries. That is where it is. Mm -hmm. But most of the base of the blends that we make, we use in Dominican tobacco that we grow that tobacco. How much of an impact would you say something like doing your own additional fermentation versus just blending. How much of an impact does additional fermentation have on the final product in your opinion? Uh, there is no advantage by the end of the day with the quality of the cigar, like the combustion, uh, the taste, the age. Yeah. Because if I buy a tobacco for you, tell me that that's tobacco is three years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, probably it's a year and a half. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. What I have, I know what I have. Yeah. And this is the C, this is the H, this is the farm, 
um, I know the combustion, I know the fertilizers that I use. That's another thing. Hmm. So all the fertilizer we use for our tobacco, they're certificated and good to go with the FDA. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, there is like a smaller farmers that big corporation buy tobacco from that they don't know about manufacturing mm -hmm. and they don't know about to how the tobacco smoke. Yeah. They just grow tobacco and they have a nice plan. And sometimes for themselves to have a better yield and have no issue with their with the crop, like attack it by bug and stuff like that, they fumigate the tobacco and they apply a product that we uh that uh stick the fumigation to the leaf. Ah okay. They sell that uh those product that you can apply to the tobacco but they don't last long uh, so after a few days that's gone out of the tobacco it's not doing anything anymore so there's sometimes the smaller farmers so they don't get attacked by those bugs they use some other product that um get the fumigation that never go out of the leaves uh -huh. and you're gonna smoke that yeah and it affects the burn and it affects, stay there yeah, yeah stay there yeah and can affect your health also mm. so that's the few details that not many people knows uh but we take care of yeah because that's a, a tobacco that you gonna put in your mouth for sure you're gonna smoke that i will consume my own cigars and want to have the best out of the best quality yeah so this is a small detail that we trying to control you know here yeah another thing about this factory that we do I mean, keep a classic, you know, the cedar wood, the aging room. Yeah. Um, bunching style, it's your accordion style, like a Dominican way. Uh, that's the way that I learned from my dad. Yeah. You know, and everything else is the same. You know, it's just more about the love that you put in the product than anything else. Yeah. Speaking about the aging room, tell, tell us a little bit about what that looks like. How, what are your targets for aging? I know it varies by blend and sometimes you have to just feel that the cigar is ready when you're, when you're sampling it. Um, but in general, what is your approach to aging after production? I mean, so there is one thing that uh, people really enjoy um, when they are smoking a cigar. And even the people that smoke the cigar, even the people beside you. When someone like the cigar that you say, that cigar smells good. Yeah. Do you know what it mean? No. This mean aged tobacco. Really? Yes. So it increases the aromatic quality. Yeah. When you take a cigar out of the cellophane, that is very old, and the cellophane is look like gold. Yeah. And you smell that cigar. Yeah. Always smell great, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know why? Much sweeter and yeah, it smell great because the age on the tobacco. So on the aging, we normally use between three years to five years old tobacco that's on the like the base of yeah of the age pre-production yeah we have some little bit of stuff that we do like uh, six, six seven eight years but very small quantities yeah um and then we age the cigar minimum three months so when you have age of tobacco and age of cigar you get a flavor but you also have a nice aroma on the cigar and we always want to create like the complete experience you know by the sense by the look that look good nice wrapper nice well done cigar it tastes amazing smell great right mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to accomplish with the aging of the cigar and sometimes that requires more yeah sometimes for example i have cigar like the king's gold that i like to age those cigar for two months and then the ship mm -hmm. Because I think with the humidity, that tobacco tastes a little way more richer. Mm. Um, and then you have cigar that, like the Queen Spirit that we age with the cigar for a whole year. It becomes more mellow, more balanced. The aroma is better. The spirit is whole better, less spice, you know. But so the Queen Spirit are aged a year. That's the cigar that I age longer. Yeah. The Queen Spirit. And that is far beyond the industry standard for sure. Yep. So one more thing I wanted to ask about um, we talked a lot about the cigars and the quality and the factory. Tell us a little bit about the Adventura branding and the story you're trying to tell with that branding. Adventura uh, branding is very simple. Um, 
that was an idea from our partner Marcel Noble. Mm -hmm. uh, he come from Europe. I'm in the Dominican Republic, like in the New World America, and and that's how uh, the cigar industry burned uh, when the Europeans started traveling, and they explore, they navigate, they get into the New World, the American continent, into the Dominican Republic, Cuba. They find out gold, tobacco, people smoking tobacco, and they started to bring back those goods to the uh, old continent. And and that's why we named it the brand like that. You know, it's more explore, aventura explorer, aventura the navigator, aventura the conqueror. And then you have aventura the royal return that come with two blends, the queen's pearl that is a gift for the queen mm -hmm. and the king's gold that is a, key, a gift for the king. Yeah. Uh, then that was the end of the first chapter of the Aventura and then the second chapter is come more like a, with uh, characters. Yeah. When they were exploring and navigating the ocean and the Caribbean that they got like the pirates. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those experience. So then we have Barbarroja Invasion and now uh, next month on uh, July 24, we are releasing the Blue Eye Jack Revenge. Interesting. So tell us a little bit about the Blue Eye Jack Revenge, please. Blue Eye Jack Revenge, uh, the 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 Barbara Invasion mm -hmm. is way more aggressive, sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the first cigar that we use in uh, Habano Binder from my farm. Oh, really? And that was that blend was the Balobin Tabacalera William Ventura, mm -hmm. and then the Blue Eye Jack is uh, the uh, Blue Eye Jack Revenge um the revenge is sweeter right ah okay so it's a more mellow a uh, cigar with a lot of character it have power but it's very sad but it's very sweet i will say it's the first blend that i ever tried in my life that you can feel some sweetness in the retro oh really yeah you get like a some sweetness in the mouth feeling and you pull it but also you feel that same sweetness in the retro when you do the retro and easy cigar to smoke, enjoyable, uh, nice combustion, and and medium body and nice flavor. That's the Blue Eye Jack. Can you tell us a little bit about the components of the Blue Eye Jack? Uh, San Andres uh, Colorado wrapper, oh. uh, Dominican binder, Dominican filler. Nice. Yep. Is this regular production or limited? Regular production. Regular production. Fantastic. Yep. Okay. The last question I have for you is actually it's two part question. So for smokers out there who are not familiar with your line, where would you recommend they begin exploring the Adventura uh, selection? Uh, I would recommend to start with the Navigator mm. is the middle point. Yeah. Straight medium body cigar, smooth, easy to smoke, um, very complex, well balanced. Um, and that's a cigar I'm like uh, you're never gonna be a, like I hate that cigar. Yeah, sure. Maybe not my style. Maybe I like a little bit stronger, uh, but never like I'm gonna disappoint you. Yeah. Then after you try the Navigator, like if you want something a uh, fuller from Aventura, you can go up to the uh, Barbarroja and the King's Gold. Yeah. And if you want to go more mild, you go the Queen's Bird. But that's like a uh, the perfect middle point perfect. for Aventura. Is there anything else you would want to say to the consumers and to the smokers out there about the Adventura brand or about this factory? Um, I will say if you are looking for a premium cigar, give a shout out to Adventura. Uh, we try to offer um, and what is a premium experience. First of all, we'll make a premium cigar is a good tobacco, well, well aged, then the complexity of the blend, the balance of the blend, and the age of the cigar. And we try to cover all those components and also the, the manufacturing, the construction of that cigar. We working on the excellence level, you know, to create perfection. It's not gonna be perfect, but we're looking for perfection all the time. As close as a human can as, get. As close as a human can get, so you don't waste your money when you buy the Aventura cigar. And the other thing, uh, we work on the future. Uh, I will say we are one of the youngest uh, manufacturing the industry. And, and we've been working in this industry for about 20 years now. So um, 
if you are my age in the 30s i mean you can have like uh, a manufacturer around you age that can understand better you know uh what you're looking for uh, um, uh and also can educate um true like where's the premium cigar and the smoke and any of the spinners of a cigar fantastic interesting i speak half english i try to explain like a little better but no 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 i get my it. my english sure. is done for today it's a little late it's a little late <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe another maybe another coffee <laughs> no. maybe another coffee man well, it's time for a beer actually yeah it's, it's time probably. for a beer man let's do it I thank you so it, much man. man thank you thanks everybody for watching and uh yeah if you're unfamiliar with the line start with the navigator up or down from there if not uh like myself look forward to blue-eyed jack's revenge yep fantastic thank you thanks guys thank you brother.